Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to Autobahn Investing. My name is Brian. And for the next 10, 15 minutes or so, we're going to talk about what I'm doing in the market to make money. I publish my trades on YouTube before I make them. Last week, I was up 108%. And so far this week, I'm up over 200%. And I'm proud to say that's without touching GameStop. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. I hope we've got a lot to talk about today. Um, a lot of changes going on in the market. So I really hope you enjoy. I hope you learn a couple things and um, let me know what you think. Thanks. And let's just jump right in. Okay, let's start with the summary of where we're at uh, for the week. We're here on Wednesday. Today's January 27th. We're halfway through the, uh, the week, so now's a good time to sort of level set a little bit. Everything I've talked about and I traded this week, everything I've touched, I talked about on Sunday before I did it. So there should be no surprises here. I started the week off with $982 in cash. I held Zynga call options, five of them actually, through the weekend. Um, turns out that was a bit of a wrong move. I could have sold them for higher on, on Friday than I ended up selling them on, on Monday morning. Sold those five for $1.09 a piece. And um, that was a $436. Um, I bought them at 49 cents. So that was a, a good trade. Um, I had cash of $1,418 uh, after that transaction. As I indicated, Monday morning, I bought one Beyond Meat call, $150 February 5th call at $5.10. I sold that today for $38, representing a profit of $3,000, or I'm sorry, not a profit, but a, a um, proceeds from that transaction of $3,290. And I bought two Palantir calls on Monday as well, February 19th, $35 calls at $3.20 each. And I sold both of those today at $8.50 with a Proceeds from that being 1,060. So cash not trade, it was 268. Profit from those trades, 4,350, the account value. And it's all cash now. I am, I'm holding nothing overnight tonight, and I'll talk about why in a few minutes. But the total account value of $4,618. My last Friday's account value, as you'll recall, was 1,450. That represents a 218% profit over the last three days. I've deposited $800 into this account. And so my total account percentage increase uh, from these trades is now sitting at 477%. I started this a week ago Monday, um, which is a hell of a return on what was, uh, what is that, seven trading days, because a week ago Monday was, uh, was Martin Luther King Day. So uh, as I indicated, I'm holding no securities, no options, no, no stock in my trading account overnight tonight. And so let's talk about why I'm doing that, where I see the market for the rest of this week, and um, the watch list that I've got put together for the rest of this week. Okay, as I just indicated, I got extremely defensive this afternoon. And so let me explain exactly why I did that and chose to do that. And then we'll go from there in terms of the game plan for the rest of the week. First of all, I started off on this, this particular graph. This is the, um, the Spider ETF, tracks the S&P 500. And I've laid over that the Bollinger Bands. And 90% of the time, a security will trade within those bands, within the upper and lower limits of those bands. And as you can see, there's a midpoint as well. You can see since the beginning, well, about the middle, I guess, of November, um, well, maybe the first week or so of November, the spider broke above that midpoint, that midpoint of the bands, and has ridden up the upper level of that band ever since. It came down and bounced off of that um, that midpoint a couple times. Looks like there towards the maybe the third week or so of December it did it. First week of January it did it, and looks like on January 15th it had a, a quick little bounce off of that. Today it cut through it. It cut through that, that midpoint of the band and looks like it wants to come down to the lower level of that band, the $368, representing about another 2%, let's call it, move. However, let's take those Bollinger Bands off. We'll just overlay the 50-day moving average on here. And what we're looking at 
is it's coming down. The 50-day moving average on the spider is four points below where it's at right now. If it cuts through that, the next level of real support is somewhere in this neighborhood, and that's about the 355, representing about a 20-point uh, move, about another 8% uh, move to the downside, which I think, quite frankly, is, is highly probable at this point. And the reason I think that is because of the VIX. The VIX measures uh, volatility in the market, and it's a fear gauge. And as you can see, the VIX jumped 61% today, up 14, over 14 points. That's, that's right here. Now, that's a huge move. That's an absolute huge move. And just to add insult to injury here, it closed at the high. Like it, it, it went up 14 points and stopped there because the market closed. If the market went on till 5 o'clock, this thing's telling you it would have kept on screaming higher. So I guess that's good that the market closed. But because of those two reasons alone, I got defensive today and sold um, the options that I had open that I talked about earlier. And I'm sitting here as I, as I speak tonight, uh, my account's in full cash. So I spent a couple hours looking at opportunities, setups for the rest of the week. And um, I got to tell you, on the long side, I didn't find much. And so I'm going to be really hesitant the rest of this week to pull the trigger on something. I mean, it has to be really compelling. And, and keep in mind, I'm not interested in playing in the GameStop game or the AMC game. Um, you know, if I wanted that, I'd go down to the casino and, um, and, and, and try my luck at Blackjack or something like that. That's got, I, I'm not interested in that. I'm trying, to, um, I'm trying to make money. And see, the problem with those things is you can be right a hundred times and um, and you're wrong once and it'll wipe you wipe your account clean and um, the the truth of the matter is as I see it at least with GameStop it's a zero sum game people will win and people will make a lot of money but there will be those that get crushed by it and um, you know it's the last one in kind of thing uh, it's a musical chairs kind of analogy. And I don't want to have anything to do with it. I want to get in those things before the move's made and ride the wave. But um, but look, I'm not going to kick myself for not being there to, to play in that game. Um, I'm here to make money over time, not, um, not a get-rich-quick scheme or something like that. Hats off to you guys that are doing it and enjoying the ride. Um, protect yourself and, um, and don't, uh, don't try to, you know, consistently every day swing for the grand slam. Uh, if you made money on it, good for you, but be careful is my advice to you. But that being said, I got extremely defensive today. I'll go through a couple of things that I see as a setup here, and then I'll talk about what I see as the, the what I'm, I'm really thinking is the, is the best setup I, I've seen. Um, so um, first off is um, LAZR, Luminar Technologies. Look, I'm not exactly 100% thrilled with this. It's formed a base since the beginning of December. It had a massive run from 10 to 45 or so. Um, you know, good for it. And it's based nicely since then. Um, the RSI has come down to the midpoint. It's looking like it's trying to edge up. Today formed an interesting doji. It looked like it wanted to break out the last couple of days and slid back down. That's a little bit concerning. Um, but I do like the MACD crossover that's trying to occur, but I want to see confirmation of that MACD crossover before getting into this. Truthfully, I want to see this thing volume over, you know, today over what looks like maybe, you know, 14 million shares or so. Um, I want to see substantially more than that. And I want to break between the 37.50 and $40 move to, to buy into that. Um, next up is, um, the support.com again. Nice base going on here. Let me close that ad. Nice base going on since the you know beginning of October. So looks like we're trying to have a crossover here on the PPO. Um, the CMF is back into buy territory. Um, but you know, look, it's it's not a great setup. It's it's just not a great setup. I'm maybe watching this for volume coming in, but I, I'm not I'm not real big on this idea to be quite honest. What I am big on is buy deal. And what I'm really big on with Baidu is not buying Baidu, but buying puts. So betting that it's going to 
that the um, that the stock's going to fall. And the way this thing is roll, looks like it's rolling over. RSI is coming back down. MACD crossover, negative crossover, way in the overbought territory. Um, and I'm betting on this thing coming down to its 50, hitting its 50-day moving average, somewhere around the 190 mark. So what I'm looking at here is February 5th puts on the 230, trading at about $9. Um, I think that represents a pretty compelling risk-reward ratio at $9 um, at what it closed at today. Let's say it opens at 230 tomorrow. Let's say it's 220. It needs to trade below 211. Um, uh, to, if I buy it at 230, sorry, it needs to trade below 221 and 188 down to, call it 190. Call it 191 for simple math. That's a $30 move. So that's a risk, uh, you know, 900 or so. Um, to make 3600 if that it proves right. That's what I'm going to be watching for. That's the main thing going into the end of the week. I think it's pretty compelling. Um, I don't see much on the long side, I'll be honest with you. And um, uh, I, I think there's probably some money to be made in some of these, maybe AMC, maybe uh, GameStop, but that kind of game is not for me. So um, if it is for you, good, good for you. But um, I think now's the time to get defensive. It looks like the market wants to, uh, wants to uh, correct and a 10% to 15% correction right now probably makes a lot of sense given where with a huge run we've had over the last going into the election and since the election and since the inauguration, um, the, the market's ignored a lot, of, a lot of negativity and just kept powering upwards. It's probably healthy for the market at this stage to take a breather. And therefore, I think it's probably healthy for me to take a breather too. So the main thing, just to recap, I'll be watching for is Baidu, maybe buying some puts on that. I think that's a decent put setup. But beyond that, um, there's not much to, uh, to report on. So, uh, as a reminder, I am not a financial advisor. I am a dude with a computer and I just do this for a hobby and I like talking about it. I do like making money, but this is just a hobby for me. So don't buy or sell anything just because I said so. Do your own research. If you do like what I'm talking about and you feel so inclined, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing. Thank you for that. Certainly the likes and comments are very much appreciated. Thank you for that as well. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll try to post something tomorrow um, after the close, too, if, uh, if there's something worth talking about. Anyway, make it a great evening. Thanks, you guys.